So what are you up to right now? Yep. Um, well, so the, the, the challenge of being the only marketing um, person at a startup is you're expected to do all the things. Um, and so that's everything from content, demand gen, uh, the website, owning the website, product marketing, uh, SEO. Yeah. Paid ads, um, on down the line, sales enablement, um, you know, PR, um, in some, in some ways, um, and marketing ops too, right? Like Mm. setting up, um, for us, since I'm the first hire, I'm setting up HubSpot and Salesforce integrations and all of these things to be able to do some you know, email campaigns and, and stuff. But then it's like you go down that road and you have to do data cleanup and um, all of this other stuff. So it's, um, it's yeah, you're kind of expected to wear a lot of hats and, you know, frankly, execute on a lot of hats. And if you don't have the experience doing um, certain things, you either need to be able to go find affordable freelancers to help you with those Mm. things or you know quickly become an expert on all of those things so you can do it yourself um and that can be tough i mean it can be a a a challenge of of knowing what to prioritize um what to say no to what to say yes to what to get help with what to um do yourself um I mean, it's exciting, but it is also daunting. I mean, I can't, I can imagine a little bit <laughs> before, it, because before, before we had our first market year, I mean, a lot of that was like, figure it out cost, right? Like, how do you, and I'm not a market year, so I can understand how, how crazy it can be. But, but then also, I had, but you also I, sort of are as a founder too, right? So you've got yeah. your company and you know, your you know, by the, the modern, modern rules of engagement, you're expected to not just be a founder, not just be responsible for the mission and vision and culture, but now, you know, you're probably also maybe a little bit responsible for the product, customer yeah. outreach, um, and growing your brand on LinkedIn, right? And so like that is essentially marketing. And the idea is yeah. if you grow your brand on LinkedIn, then that grows you know, Mason's brand. Um, and so in some ways you're not responsible for marketing, but you kind of are, (laughs) you know, like you're, you're sort of expected to, to, to do that. I mean, that's almost, you know, founders are expected to be marketers in some ways, um, nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. And I was actually listening to April Dunford on some podcast and, um, an interesting thing because she's been like across yeah. the spectrum, right? Oh, she's sure. been yeah. in big ones, huh? Yep. And uh, she wrote her book uh, primarily to kind of coach founders like me. And I've just got the book and I'm like reading it yeah. every day. Um, the next time we meet, I'm gonna, you know, pull out a few snippets and we are gonna sort of like tear it down. Sure. Uh, but she said an interesting thing about that the starting point to anything that you wanna do acquisition. It could be marketing, sales, inbound, PR, whatever, is actually setting a context of where your product can be used or what the context of your product. Yeah. And she gave the example of like cake versus muffins, right? She said that it's the same batter, it's everything is the same, but the way you package it and where it implies, like if you call it a muffin, the context is a muffin or a cake. And then it suddenly shifts because a muffin is breakfast and two dollars or maybe a dollar. And sure. you know, you're talking about this segment of use of people like me who love having chocolate for breakfast. <laughs> sure. Right? And and cake is more restaurants and dessert and, and so context matters. And when you set the context, that's like the starting point. And then you kind of derive your positioning, you know, and your yeah. message, and then and then you start working on your you know, acquisition strategies or even plan it out in the first place, right? Yeah. It was very profound for me, actually. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of, um, have you, like, followed the work of um, 
his name is Andy Raskin, so he does. Mm. Um, yeah. His whole thing is like the you know company's strategic narrative, which is mm. essentially its reason for existing, um, and how everything sort of flows from that. Right? It's it's the story you tell to the market for you know why um, your company and your product is best positioned um, to help other companies sort of navigate changes in the market. Yeah. Um, and, and if you can kind of nail that, then it, it sort of, it flows from, you know, everything from sort of your sales pitch to all of that other stuff, all the marketing activities kind of flows from that. It's, it's, um, and it's probably very similar to sort of what April Dunford is talking about a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and we're kind of in the process of doing that too, right? Like I think, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd love to hire, say, Andy Raskin or, or April Dunford, but like probably not going to. And so, you know, a lot of it is trying to figure that out, kind of working through that on yeah. our own. Um, and, and for us, you know, it's great because, you know, we're in the, the healthcare payment space here in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we have sort of this natural like payments in the U.S. has changed mm-hmm. really drastically in the last three or four years with, Mm. you know, Amazon and Venmo and Mm. Apple Pay and and all Mm. of these sort of technologies that makes payments and transferring money a lot easier for people in their everyday life. Yeah, especially Venmo. (laughs) Especially Venmo, right? Um, And yet in healthcare, it's still largely based on sending paper bills that require Mm. uh, someone to like write a check and mail a check in and have that check like manually processed and, yeah. and all of this stuff. And so for us, it's a little bit easy because the, the context um, is like, there has been this profound shift over here for everyone in their everyday life. And that shift has not happened in healthcare. And like, you yeah. need to meet that shift in order to like make your patients happy. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, so we're, we're trying to build that out um, and, and really kind of hone, hone that in. And I think, you know, when we, we kind of get that, um, you know, that'll help with just about everything else, you know, in terms of sending emails and blog posts and on down the road. Yeah. yeah. Do you, you remember the first time we met? We actually, the, the reason yeah, I reached out yeah. to you was exactly that, right? Yeah. Like, how do I set the context of our product of me and how do we work on it yeah so it's very interesting that it's it's like a universal thing right like everybody likes to know what's the right context yeah it's important yeah and and i think like to bring back to that like the strategic strategic narrative like is the Mm -hmm. context um it is and it's been fun to kind of watch you you kind of like work that out in real time in some ways to see I'm yeah. sure it doesn't feel that way, but I mean, I think this is, it's a process for companies to go through. I mean, no one, no company comes out of, you know, um, if you look at Gong or like Drift or some of these companies that have, have really done it well in the last mm. few years. I mean, it, yeah. it's taken them years to, to kind of get to that point and kind of iron out that story and, and kind of work through it. Um, yeah. And so I think kind of the work that you've been doing, even in the last two, three months, I mean, has been, it's going to make a profound difference, I think, for your, your company, you know, this year and into next year. Yeah. Do you yeah. feel that way? I mean, as you're sort of working yeah. through it? I see it. And there are two reasons why I kind of, st- I'm starting to feel that it will. Um, it's becoming like the, the story that I have to tell someone, like the first time we met, I think it was a 30 minutes call and all I was talking about was what do we do? Yeah. <laughs> now it's like, I think it's, it's actually down to like three minutes, five minutes and I can actually at least convey something. So I think that's definitely progress, right? Like in, oh, in yeah. the last few months that we've known each other, it's, it's definitely progress. The second thing is when um, 
uh, someone in sales or in marketing and I, we have such a tiny team so it's like one two people <laughs> like you know like that's it that's sales marketing we are done uh, but when they come in and they have written something or they're talking about a potential customer right and they're saying that this is what it's so it's hard but now we can we are literally saying no 90% of the time and i think that's a good thing saying you're saying no, no to potential customers yeah you're like, looking at the customer they're not a good fit for your icp the use cases don't fit the entry yeah. strategy doesn't fit the yeah. way we have to serve them in in this not serve them but the way you got to implement it it doesn't fit yeah. it doesn't fit with the uh, what we can do today and you you can't hurry up product development right like you can't just say that hey we'll we'll build uh, the world's smartest whatever <laughs> xyz in like yesterday that yeah. doesn't happen um so it, it's so much easier to refocus your your co-founder both of us and that tiny team everybody's attention on that one thing that we are and we can do yeah and there's tons of things that's going to come that we can't yet it's exciting i wish we could but we can't yeah and it's I mean, okay and and that's okay i think you know if you look at i mean a lot of products that grow you know they started out with a very defined like they were disruptive because it was a very defined thing mm. that they did at a lower cost it was easier to use it was simpler mm. whatever that is and they were disruptive because of that and then they were able to kind of grow you know go up market or add new features and and yeah. do that, those things um do you feel that that's hard right now to say no as a company that's grown like cuz you want the business i would imagine yes i want the business <laughs> it's so hard to say no and i think that's what we struggled with for a while you know and um, on how to say no consistently but now we are very consistently saying no <laughs> yeah. and and it i feel like so when uh, when my sister had her twins right and um they they are growing up they were growing up and now they're 12 but they were growing up and they're like starting to walk and they have like mommy this mommy that and and, and the only word that you know you know that the singular word in that household was no yeah right <laughs> but it helps because then uh, you know you can you can do the right things for those little things right? and it's two of them at the same time so you you got to say no more often <laughs> Yeah. And I feel like it's it's kind of like the same situation uh but even uh with more impact because now you're not you're not dealing with just children who you can explain their family there's a lot of connotations here here you're talking about a bunch of people in the team who literally I I can see it in some you know sometimes the disappointment in the other person's eye you know that oh my god this is such a great potential why aren't we taking this up right Well, strategically it doesn't fit right now that's yeah. it yeah yeah you know yeah i mean but it's it good doesn't. right if you have that strategy it allows you to focus it allows you to you know not get <clears throat> it's like what's that expression like getting out over your skis or something uh that <laughs> might be like, something like that that might yeah. be like an americanism um <laughs> or something but uh but no but again right but i i do think um a lot of companies that is the temptation right is that it's really easy to get out over your skis because you want to kind of grow the business you take on business that yeah. maybe you shouldn't or um but having sort of knowing your strategy and, and being able to really kind of focus and stick to that um probably puts you in a position long term right so then you're you have that foundation Fingers. that when you want to turn that switch on yeah. to to really grow then you're in a much better foundation to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Actually that's very interesting. You said exactly something that uh, somewhere along the lines er- Eric Schmidt was talking to mm. uh it's a lo- it's a very old video. Was talking to Reed Hoffman in this uh series of blitz scaling videos with Stanford and at Stanford rather. And um it, one of the things he talks about is exactly what he just said, which is you know you are not ready till you're ready <laughs> and so you know it just you're not ready to switch that on so don't 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 yeah. don't be premature right 
right? And it's so hard. I'm still learning, to be honest. I think it, it's going to take a while to, because I'm, I'm laying in my bed at night and I'm like, man, why don't we just do that? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just like, you distract yourself with some yoga or, or a podcast and you just it's okay ignore it <laughs> you said no it's for a reason stand by it so i'm trying i'm trying really hard because yeah. i think that's the key that you have to say a lot of no's yeah i mean that's and that's admirable too right because uh, i think i mean saying no is hard and learning to say no is is, is a hard process um so i mean that's you, you should especially you know, for a people pleaser <laughs> yeah well i mean pat yourself on the back right i mean uh it's a, it's a small victory and uh and it sounds like you, you've earned it 